when it comes to self-care and personal empowerment, your life experience, along with the personal identities that you carry with you, inform what you think about and how you're going to access self-care. Today, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about intersectionality and its impact on self-care and personal empowerment. I'm Heather Evans. For the best advice on self-care and personal empowerment, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell to get notified when I release new videos every Monday and Thursday. Some of you might be wondering what intersectionality is, so let's start there. Intersectionality was a term that was coined by Professor Kimberly Crenshaw in 1989. And it's a term that she was using to describe how individual identities, race, class, gender, intersect with one another to inform things like how we experience the world and how the world experiences us in terms of privilege, in terms of oppression, and in terms of access. Over the past decade, intersectionality is now being used in other spaces, including the wellness space, so that we can start to deconstruct what self-care, what personal empowerment, what wellness looks like as it intersects with our own individual identities. In my work as a self-care and empowerment coach, I'm looking at these intersectionalities anytime I'm working with a client or teaching a student. I also think it's really important that we as individuals do the work to claim our identities. One way we can do this is by looking at a model that I like to use, and that's our dimensions of diversity. Our dimensions of diversity give us a framework by which we can begin to see how our own individual identities can intersect and inform not only how we see the world, how we move into experiences, how we interact with others, but also how experiences move into us, how the world experiences us and how people perceive us. To give you an example of this, I was chatting with a friend the other day and she and I were talking about our our identities as when it comes to applying for jobs. Me as a self-identified white middle-class woman would have a very different experience applying for a particular position than my friend who is a self-identified black middle-class woman. Our own individual identities come with experiences that inform how we would approach that process. It also informs how we approach our self-care and what self-care and wellness we feel is accessible to us at any time in our lives. So in order to begin the process of claiming your own identity, I encourage you to look at these different dimensions of diversity. We have our internal dimensions. These are things that for the most part we are born with and that we cannot change. And I also want to say that you know, these, these concepts come with labels that come with categorizations that have been created to stoke division. But I also want to acknowledge that scientifically, we as humans, our brains are hardwired to categorize. We categorize in a variety of different ways. And I think it's really important that we're transparent about the fact that when we see someone walk into a room, we're, we're automatically categorizing. We're, we're trying to figure it out. Our system wants to know what's happening. If we can become aware that that's happening and not create story, not create assumption based on what we see, but rather have the courage to ask questions, then we can start to deconstruct some of these categories and how they have been used to oppress how they have been used to divide, how they have been used to conquer and colonize. So when it comes to claiming your personal identity, you start with your internal dimensions. And these might be things such as your age, your race, your ethnicity. It might be your sexual orientation, your gender identity. These are all things that you get to identify for yourself. Then we move into 
the next level of the framework, which is our external dimensions of diversity. These might include things like where we reside geographically, where we work, where we've gone to school or education level. It might include things like your socioeconomic status. These external dimensions of diversity add a layer by which we're experiencing the world and by which we're situating ourselves. The next layer when it comes to these dimensions of diversity is this outer influence later, layer. And these are things like pol politics and social constructs. These are things like natural events that are happening. All of these things also inform how we're situating ourselves when we move through the day. I'm going to include a link to this Dimensions of Diversity framework for you below so that you can begin to look at your own identities and begin to ask yourself questions around how is that informing how I see my self-care, how I see my own empowerment, how I see my wellness. When we begin to look at these frameworks, we can then begin to reclaim our identities. We can begin to understand how our identities, how our experiences inform how we approach our own well-being. And this is a conversation that is happening at a broader level in the wellness industry. I'm having this conversation with other coaches as well, beginning to deconstruct this industry and ask some hard questions about who feels it's accessible to them. How do we make it more accessible? What questions should we be asking? When I'm working with clients or when I'm teaching students, I have the awareness that everybody is coming to this work with their own identity, with their own experience. And because of the work that I did in my previous career as a diversity and inclusion consultant, because of the work that I've done on myself and, and owning my own identities and what that means, because I actively situate myself, I'm, I'm aware that there are different dynamics that are going to inform the self-care and personal empowerment coaching process. So to give you an example, if I were to situate myself and look at how my own identities inform how I move in the world, I would situate myself as a privileged, white, middle-class woman. I'm cisgender. I'm married. And I happen to be married to somebody who identifies as a man. I'm a mother. I have a graduate degree. I'm a yoga teacher. I'm a dance teacher. I'm a coach. I live on Vancouver Island in Canada. I'm an immigrant to Canada. All of these things, all of the ways that I just situated myself inform what access I have, what privilege I have, the oppression I experience, if any at all. So that's the question you get to ask yourself is how do my identities inform how I see my self-care personal empowerment? No one can define that for you. However, I also want you to be aware that socially, politically, these things are being defined in very critical ways right now. And that we have to look at the fact that systems have been designed to favor people of a particular race, that systems have been created to oppress others. And that because of these systems of privilege and oppression, it's impacted wellness. It's impacted well-being mentally, emotionally, energetically, physically. It's had an impact on people empowering themselves. And in this work, if we can look at that, if we can be honest about that, then we can start having some real conversations about how to change things, how to transform things. And there are amazing people already doing that work. I'm going to link to some people that I am finding really inspiring in the description below. You can find them on Instagram, online, because it's long overdue. And, and not that these conversations haven't been happening, but now these conversations are being elevated. 
if you are interested in doing more of this work. I encourage you to sign up for the Inner Fire membership program. We look at identity. We look at situating ourselves and we look at how our experiences inform how we take care of ourselves on a daily basis. We will actually do a deep dive into this and examine how our dimensions of diversity are impacting how we view our wellness on a day-to-day -day basis. I will include a link in the description for you to access more information about the membership program. And just so that you are aware, I do have different levels of access because I believe in making self-care accessible for all. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like it. Remember to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell to get notified when I release new videos every Monday and Thursday. Stay ignited out there, situate yourself out there, and I will see you soon. Bye.